I do read a lot about the about what's going on in the world today and, and kind of relate that to prophecy, how prophecy is being played out at, right around the world as we look at it today. So they, there are things that are of concern to me. Okay? But what I see too much today is we have too, way too many people living in fear. Now, I can understand those who don't know Jesus living in fear. But if you know Jesus, you should not be living in fear. Amen, Amen brother. You should be dependent upon the Word. Well, we all know what's happened in the last few years. We had, we had our blessed COVID come by. Uh, one of that was, you know, I, I read what uh, some pundit, one of the talking heads said about that. They said, yeah, it, uh, we never waste an opportunity to put to use any tragedy. So the more trouble we have, the better that I get. Because they can try to manipulate us. Now, well, what happened with COVID? I'm not, I'm not down to that. It was, it was, there were people who were very sick from it. There were people who died from it. Absolutely. But the same is true of, of uh, influenza. But I do believe that our government and those people in the government use that as a scare tactic for us. And it's all a manipulation thing. Like puppets. Like puppets. Uh, now, what I read out there is they're starting to run that up the flagpole again. Now they're saying, oh, there's probably a new kind of COVID coming. Well, how the heck can you get a new kind of COVID? Does it start at your toes or something? I don't know. But they already started that up. And then you've got things going on there like right now, there's so much going on. There's, there's talk about doing away with the monetary systems and going to uh, <coughs> digital currency. Mm -hmm. That's very real thing, folks. There are countries who are already doing this. And believe me, with the administration that's in the, in the, in the White House now, they're, they're like sheep. They're going to fall right along with whatever else their world wants to do. And my fear is, you know, we have, a, we have an election coming up next year. I, I'm not going to stand up here and become political about things. Uh, but I don't know, I don't think there's any person in and of themselves can correct what's happened so far in this country. Only God can. Only God can. And so when I look at Jesus coming, I say, come on, Jesus. Amen. Don't wait too long. It's getting bad here. But he promised it, get, it would get bad. So, we've got to quit being distracted by the facts and figures that the government throws at us. And the opinions. Everybody's got an opinion and everybody's an expert on everything. Well, you know the thing about... Uh, about experts and predictions and percentages and stuff. You know that 75% of uh, uh, statistics are made up on the spot. You get that? I don't know what it is. I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> on the spot. Huh? On the spot. On the spot. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's what happens. But I think we've got some people in the government who are becoming very wise to that. Because I see some people in, in, in our governing body who are stopping these people and questioning them something and making them come up with the right answer. And if they can't come up, they're just blasting them out of the world. I'm glad we're doing that, but now that's, that's the world out there. This is going to go on in the world. What we need to worry about is us here, God's people. God's children. Like I said, we need to have our eyes upon Jesus each and every day in everything we do, in everything we say, 
And, and we, we need to go out there with the idea that God has sent us out there to bring more people in. Not necessarily into this church, but more people <coughs> in to know Jesus Christ. So I think it's time that we got up out of our seats, stood up, shut up, listened up, and spoke up about Jesus Christ. Be we need to do that. Be a disciple. Be a disciple. It's very easy to be a believer in Jesus Christ. Very easy. Sometimes it's too easy. Because there's a, there's a caveat that goes with that that says you can't stay in that place all this time. You can't stay there at the cross the rest of your life. You've got to move beyond the cross. Jesus moved beyond the cross. It's not that the cross lost any effectiveness. It's still effective. It's just as powerful as it ever was. But we've moved on from that. And we now have a directive from Jesus to go into all the world preach the gospel, and make disciples of all nations, teaching them about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's our job. Our job is not to drive down the road on Sunday morning, sit here in a nice comfortable chair, and get your mouth back there while, while some big mouth like me is up your tongue. Okay? That's why y'all sit on the back road, right? You get a nap better. I can't see guys from up here. Wake up, Jerry. <laughs> I think that we're blessed in this church. I will tell you that right now. Now, I'm not, I'm not touting anything except the fact that the gospel is preached in this church and it will always be preached in this church. As long as I have anything at all, any input at all to it, that's what's going to be preached. It's the gospel. Because I think and I believe that our time is short and that the return of Jesus Christ is imminent. Yes. Take a look at what's going on out there, folks. There's hate. There's violence. There's people trying to divide what we call the races. Now, as the Sunday school class found out this morning, there are there's only one race. The human race. The human race. Yes. Because they, they, they got to watch uh, got to watch the uh, guy who wrote our Sunday school curriculum in one of his videos. And it's called uh, what was it called? One blood, one race. One blood, one race. One blood, one race. And he talks about it. And it's just basic stuff. It's nothing new. It's nothing learn earth shaking. It's there. It's in the Word. We've got to start paying more attention to what's in here and less attention to what's in that square box that sits over in the corner and we sit and do this one. We had one of those. Got knocked off of the table. Knocked off of the bookshelf and broke. Uh, good to go. Now, now the girls can't watch all their shows. They're just crying about that. <coughs> By the way, where's your sister? Oh, there she is. She's back there. No, I'm joking. Lost my kids. I know the other one's in there. All right. But I'm telling you, we don't have to know the time of the day. In fact, Jesus said nobody knows the time of the day except the Father. not up to us. To, it's not given to us to know. But to what Jesus did say is that there are signs if you will look. And he made reference to those. So those are in Matthew. And specifically, if you've got your Bibles, you might look at them while I'm going through this. It's Matthew 24, verse 3 through 14. I'll give you a second to look at it. <laughs> Need to get myself put together here. It's kind of warm up here. I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of warm. Time to take some of this stuff off. Okay, everybody should be there. That's a pretty easy book to find. Okay, 
Now, you got to remember, Jesus had been teaching at this time. He had uh, he'd been teaching the crowds. And there were massive crowds that came out to hear him talk. And he was healing the sick. Uh, all kinds of diseases and all, all these things that were vexing him. But there came a time when he, uh, we've got to remember that Jesus was God. Yes. He was also a man. He got tired. He wanted to rest, so he, he wanted to go up on the mountain. And uh, when he went up on the mountain, his disciples came to him. Now it doesn't say in the word. Now at this time, Jesus probably had some more than 150 disciples. But there's only 12 that followed him faithfully. And you know the 12. So does that tell you anything? You know, just like the disciples, we, we, can, we can go talk to Jesus. But sometimes we've got to go up on the mountain and get out of the valley to talk to Jesus. So they're sitting there and, and, and beginning in, in, in verse 3. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, his disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? It's a good question. I think I would ask that question. Jesus answered and he said, Watch out that nobody deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming I'm the Messiah, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars, rumors of war. But see to it that you're not warned. Such things must happen. <laughs> but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. <clears throat> then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. Well, that's a pleasant thought, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. Look at the person next to you and say, that may not be you. <laughs> and many false prophets will appear and will deceive many people because, because of the increase of wickedness. The love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the whole world as a testimony to all nations and men. The end will come. I just read a, an article the other day that said something like 99 point something percent of the nations that the gospel's been preached there. There's a few tribes that they're still trying to get into, but just about the whole world has received the gospel. Now the Jews will tell you until that, that until everybody gets right, <clears throat> Jesus is not going to come, or the Messiah is not going to come back. Uh, uh, Orthodox Jews don't believe in Jesus Christ. Uh, but in in, in uh, Israel right now there is a a movement going on in Israel that are Messianic Jews mm -hmm. who are putting out the word that the Messiah has come. And he's coming back again. And you have to know him if you want to go to heaven. And so there's a big push uh, among a segment of the Jewish people over there. It's growing day by day. There's a big push among the Muslim people toward Jesus Christ. In fact, if you go to basically any country, China, China's exploding. China has literally exploded. They go underground if they have to. They, they cage wherever they can to meet. And there's other countries like that. While we sit here in a nice comfortable room with nice comfortable chairs and a nice warm environment, 
and people and friends of us. While these people are being persecuted. Well, Jesus said it up there. You think these words are prophecy? <clears throat> I hope you do, because they are. What's going on right now should make us aware of the fact that Jesus is coming back. What does, what's the things he mentioned there? Wars, rivers of wars, famines, earthquakes. You know that earthquakes have increased to the point where in, in the past century there have been more earthquakes since they first started recording this. It's on that. There have been more earthquakes in that hundred years than there ever was in the world. And here. Hmm? And here. Oh yeah, so, there was one just recently. Did y'all feel that one? Did you get moved? Yeah. I got a bump. That's about all I got. We do live on a fault. You don't understand that. Yeah. So it right runs through Manhattan, if I recall. Oh, Manhattan's bad. I mean, I think that's where it starts or something. I don't know. Huh? Yeah. Well. I used to live below that dam up there at Tunnel Creek. I was worried about that. Oh, it scared me. So, these signs shouldn't make us worry. They should, we should be able to look at these signs and say, Golly, he's telling me. He's left this message for me that he's coming back. That here's what's going to be some of the signs that he's coming back. And you know, I do, now I know that everything in this book is right. Nothing is wrong in this book. Everything in there is right. Well, unfortunately, God does give us insight and understanding of things. However, the general world does not know. And you can see that out there. In fact, there are people, like I said, you know, there are now people who are saying, you know, uh, Jesus hasn't come back. I don't think he's going to come back. I think that's a pipe to them. Uh, there, are, there are people out there who, uh, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. We're, we're, there's false teachers all over the place out there. I won't tell you guys that. They are a lot thicker than ticks on a dog. But you got to look for them. You gotta look for them because, in essence, they will preach what appears to be a good sermon. But in that sermon, there will be some. Y'all remember the old adage about watching what you say about making the brownies? Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. And when you, when you make the brownies, you just go outside, get a little dog nugget, and put it in there and mix it up there. <laughs> it's, it's okay. It's just a little bit, right? Not yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what's happening to the gospel, brothers and sisters, right now. The gospel is there. It's solid like those brownies. However, there is that little nugget floating around in there somewhere. And you got to be wise when you look at the script, or when you look at somebody preaching. And wonder, are they preaching what they think, or are they preaching what God says? And if it's not preaching what God says, you better back up and turn around and go the other way. Fast. Yes. They will suck you in just like a world do. Well, two things we really need to focus on. What is is really what happens is. is uh, happening now prophesied, and what do we need to have in order to understand that prophecy? Well, one thing we've done here, Brother Stan and I have talked about it, we've, we've, we've tried to get away from our old style of preaching, which is, was topical. I know these terms don't mean a whole heck of a lot to most of you, but that's just basing your sermon on what's happening now. Uh, the other one was expository, which means you take verses, you look at the verses, you see what God is saying, and you take people through that verse. You let Scripture speak for itself. 
And I'll tell you what, God can do a lot better job than I can do, Stan can do, than Billy Graham can do. And so we're, we're heading in that direction. We really want to go that way. And we're working hard at it. Uh, poor Brother Stan, it's just, it's got him over the edge, I think. So, uh, but he's, he's getting there. He is getting there. So, we, uh, did we, what did we read? 424. Yeah, we read that. We read that, but we want to go back and relook at what it says in Matthew 24, 4 through 8. Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. You'll hear of wars and rumors of wars, see to it that you're not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Take a look at what's happened. You know, I talked about the, the, the one, the uh, digital currency is trying to be put in place out there. Uh, that's one thing. Another thing is there is a, a move toward having the one world church. That is really being pushed. In fact, they're looking at something called a one world government. And they're really pushing for it. They're pushing hard. But that's what's going to happen. They call it the new world order. I had read so much about this before. I was a, I was a pretty good student of, of eschatology, which is end times prophecy. And I used to read and meditate on that, and I used to do research on it, and I used to think, well, I have never seen any of this stuff. And then George had Hubert Walker, mm -hmm. 10 other names, Bush, stood up there and made his famous thousand points of light speech. Did you ever see that? Mm-hmm. Talked about that, and he wrecked the very end and said, This is where we will go to start a new world order. I almost fell out of my chair because I had been reading about that in prophecy. I never heard it come out of anybody's lips other than somebody who was in the church. But here's the President of the United States saying they wanted a new world order. And what comes with that new world order is one currency, one religion, one government, one person in charge. <clears throat> and you know who that person is? It's in charge. It's not Jesus Christ. <clears throat> it's a pretender. It's called the beast. Now don't, don't start getting at your books and trying to figure out what 666 means. I heard so many things on that, I don't even pay any attention to that. I just know he's going to come. Uh, in fact, I think he's in the world right now today. Mm -hmm. I think he just hadn't shown up yet. But I think he will. There will be wars and rumors of war. And so, what these people are pushing in the new world order do is promise you two things. Peace and prosperity. There will be no peace until Jesus Christ returns. Man cannot have peace among himself because we're human beings. We will betray each other. And especially at those high levels of power. Now us, we've got no power. Other than our boat. So, <laughs> who's going who's to mess with us? Nobody's going to pay any attention to us. But those people that have the power are not going to let go of the power. And they're going to do everything they can to keep it. Through all collective efforts of man, there will never be peace. Just don't believe that stuff. Jesus is the only one who brings peace. 
world is full of wars and rumors of wars. Yes, it is. <clears throat> so, you know, uh, I was in the army for quite, quite a few days, as was some of my brothers in here. And since that time, I paid closer attention to things. We have a war going on somewhere every day in this world. <clears throat> every day. Mm -hmm. We really look at the Soviet Union. We look at Eastern Europe. Uh, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan. It's all out there. People fight. What in the world are we fighting for? I was sent to Vietnam to protect democracy. <laughs> Those people did not want us there. They made it quite plain. But it was all political, political junket, but that wasn't my problem. My problem was keeping my rear end alive to get out of there. Mm. Okay. And I couldn't even do that very well. If it had not been for the Lord, I probably would not have made it. No, not probably. I wouldn't have made it. Well, if you want to read more about this, if you really want to look at prophecy, you go to Ezekiel. Uh, Chapters 38 and 39. It's going to tell you a lot about these prophecies. Uh, we're not going to look at that today because that's, that's about a three-hour session we have with all of that. But in that, they talk about a series of countries coming together to create war. And it's called the Battle of Gog and Magog. You might read about that. Um, just make sure you've got a good study Bible and let the Holy Spirit lead you if you're going to read that. I, I, would, I would suggest you do read that. Though. Read it well. And look at what's happening in the world out there right now in light of what you see in Scripture. Because right now, Russia has signed a, an agreement with Iraq, with Turkey, and I don't know who else at this point. North Korea. It started. When that coalition is big enough, guess where they're going to go? They're going to go down to Israel. Now, who would believe that a country that's smaller than our smallest state in the United States would cause this much trouble in the world? There's a good reason for it. The Hebrew people are the only people that have survived since their conception as a, as a people group. All at once. They produced the only Savior that this world ever made. You know, Mohammed did. Buddha did. Buddha said, I, I don't know me in life. I don't know what it is. I keep looking for it. Mohammed didn't know. Shintoism doesn't work. Taoism doesn't work. Some of our Christian religions don't work. <clears throat> They're just, just worldly religions covered with Christianity or covered with the Bible. This is all going down, folks, and this is going to happen. False prophets. I think sometimes we're oblivious to false prophets out there. I think inwardly we know that they're there. We just don't pay a whole lot of attention. And sometimes we, we, we're taken in by what they say. But I would, I would suggest that instead of taking things at face value, you do some research on it. 
And these folks are preaching what Paul called a different gospel. And there are preachers out there today in good Bible churches that won't speak out against that because they don't want to offend anybody. Well, you know what? Jesus said, I come to cause of vision. Jesus was a radical. He was a revolutionary. If it's in here, I'm going to speak it. I don't care whose feelings it hurts. Amen. Because I owe my allegiance to God and the God alone. Amen. Not to any man. I'm grateful for my brothers and my sisters that are around me because they're my people that keep me straight. If I go wrong, I expect anybody in here to tell me you're wrong. Show me in the Bible and I will ask forgiveness for it. And I will do it from this pulpit right here. I've done it before. And I'll do it again. Because when I speak the word, I want it to be God's word, not what I think. There are people out there who take the word and they'll twist the word. And they'll make it fit whatever their thing is that they want to do. They will take a part of the verse and they will make it into a whole thought process. We, and I'll tell you something about a lot of these preachers out there now. Uh, a lot of these preachers are getting rich off of what they're doing. Now I'll tell you something. If you want into the ministry, if you ever think about going into the ministry, you are not going to get rich. I guarantee you that right now. That's why I had to think twice when I was uh, I was asked to be a pastor here, which they're getting ready to do to me. You know, going to make me work, but. Some people do use it to get rich. I watch one pastor stand in front of his people and say, the Lord told me I need another bear jet. And I need you people to kill so I can get that, that jet that God wants me to have so I can do his work. Help me, Lord. Help us all. Huh? Help us all. Help us all. If you come into this and you want to put God's word out in front of God's people, it has to be without regard to fame, fortune, self gain, or fear of man. If you've got any of those things in you, don't stand behind this pulpit and preach to somebody. Because you're not going to preach the truth. What you need to come up here with is a healthy fear of God. You better be careful about using God's Word. You use it as, it's, as it is in the Word. Not to your advantage. Well, we have a paid pastor, and that's fine. That's okay to have that. We're just like other denominations, Catholics, Baptists, Methodists, Lutheran, you name it. But I feel that for me to get up here and preach, I've been commissioned at a higher level than that. I really feel I've been commissioned by Jesus Christ to speak the word. And now I don't want y'all to think I'm bragging. Because what I want to tell you is yes. He has called me to speak the word. But guess who else he's called? Us. You. Each and every one of you sitting out here. Amen. You are called to preach the word, to speak the word. It doesn't make me any more special than anybody else. It's just at my age, I don't really <laughs> care. Okay, you can mad at me if you want to. Don't bother me. 
But you have to be a follower of Jesus. And then when you become a follower of Jesus, you're commissioned to speak God's truth by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now, I told you to talk a little bit about the Holy Spirit. I do want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, we need the Holy Spirit. Now, we're given the Holy Spirit at the time that we give confession to Jesus Christ and we ask forgiveness and accept His, His offer of uh, eternal life. He offers to take our sins, cover our sins. We receive the Holy Spirit at that point. But there's also a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And at the baptism of the Holy Spirit, what you do is you give up everything. You give it all up. You are no longer belong to yourself, but you belong to Jesus Christ. You died. You died. You're a dead man walking. And you let the Holy Spirit come in, and the Holy Spirit will fill you up to the brim and overflow you. And it will definitely turn your head around on your shoulders when it happens. So, we're not, going, we're not going to escape a lot of this stuff that's going to happen. Y'all hear me? Mm. We're going to escape a lot of this stuff. Oh, I'm going to be... <coughs> I, I, I'm going to be raptured out of here. I don't have to mess with none of that. that, that hold, hold, hold. All of this stuff, that, that when it's going to happen, is what I have. I, I know it's going to happen. Jesus is going to come back to his church. Yeah, I know that. But I'm not going to sit here and argue it's going to be before the tribulation, the middle of the tribulation, after the tribulation. That's pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. What I believe in is pan-trib. God's in charge of the law pan out in the end. Amen. What I do believe is we're not going to get away with some of it. Because it says in Revelation, it will be three and a half years before God removes the restrainer from the world. You know who the restrainer is? The Holy Spirit. Well, now, God's not going to take all of His people out. Who's going who's to give us direction? You know, He's not going to take all of His people out and let it go. We're going to go through part of that. Now, is he going to keep us out of the major stuff? Yeah, I believe that. I'm, I'm not saying I'm mid trip, but I think he will keep us out of the major part of that. But up, up until that time, we're going to be living with this. We're going to be in the middle of this stuff. And so that's why I really, really, really encourage people to start thinking biblically and start thinking about Jesus and start looking at Jesus and start reading what he has to say and conduct ourselves as if we were in the heavenly realm. Amen. Because in Matthew, if you go back to Matthew, and you go back uh, to Matthew 5, and you begin at the very beginning, that is called the Constitution of Christianity, Matthew 5. And it talks about uh, how, we're, how we're supposed to be, and what we're supposed to do. And it's right there. And then it goes on and says, you know, you got your bees there. Be the attitude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you gotta be this way. That's gotta be your attitude. Yeah. Yeah. So man, people tell you that man's inherently good. Horse biscuits. That is a lie from Satan. Man is not inherently good. Man is born in sin. And man continues to sin. You know, I can't, I, I think every day I've got to go, oh Lord, forgive me for that. I'll let a word come out of my mouth. I'll let say, say something to somebody. I do something that's not right, and the Holy Spirit gets a hold of me. <coughs> so, I, I know. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Uh, I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty, I, I'm a pretty chubby boy, but I don't think there's enough for me to pay for all those sins. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Second Timothy 3, 1-5 tells us, but understand this. 
in the last days will come times of difficulty. The people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of God but denying its power. Avoid such people. <clears throat> that's the word. Now that's a that's a pretty good living. We all fall into that somewhere. And, and you know, we 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 have we our economy's tanked out right now. Our economy's basically tanked out. And it's easy to fall into need money. I see so many things out there. I I, I was reading about what uh, what Elon Musk had with his, his setup that he's got now for playing the market, and you can buy into that. And you can, it does the work for you. You can make like thousands of dollars a month. You know. Well, just because I went to that side and looked at it and backed out, now I get forty of them a day. There are tons of them out there guaranteeing you ten thousand dollars a month, thirty thousand dollars a month. And ain't a one of them true. They're not true. They're just trying to drag people in. They're trying to give you false hope out there. Um, you know, there. I, I've been to churches. I, I've been to churches that that have. A religiosity. But that religiosity denies the authority of God. And we're warned to watch out for people like that. That they're going to lead you astray. Now I know I may step on some toes here, but I'm going to say it. You've got a gospel going on out there, it's called the prosperity gospel. And they will tell you. Jesus wants you to be rich. And I've even heard one of them say, Jesus wants you to be rich like me. Jesus wants to take care of our needs. Jesus said, we don't have to worry about things. If we're faithful to Him, we'll do what He tells us to do. And we are, we are living for Him. He's going to take care of you. We are only rich, sister. We're blessed. Yes. We're blessed. But that don't mean I've got money to walk in here and throw out my audience. Mm. It's not about money. It's not about money. Right. It's not about money. But people have made it about money. And they're sucking a lot of people in now. And we're at that point where, where it's just, it's awful. It is really awful. And we're just, we've got to get through it. So, I, talked, I spoke a little bit about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you haven't encountered the baptism of the Holy Spirit, talk to, talk to one of the, uh, the brothers that have been up to uh, encounter. Talk to one of the, the brothers that are in the Bible study here in the morning. Ask, what is that Holy, baptism of the Holy Spirit? Think about it, pray about it. You may want to, or you may want to experience it. We need Acts 1. Huh? Read Acts 1. There you go. Read Acts 1. It talks about it. When we arrive at understanding of biblical prophecy, along with the, apt, with the uh, aspects of biblical knowledge, we need the Holy Spirit there to lead you guys. Uh, Acts 1 5 says, For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. That's when Jesus told him, go back, you know. Uh, some, some versions will say and, in the Holy Spirit. Some will say with the Holy Spirit. The, the actual word in Greek is ein, ein, en. And it can be interpreted either way, so it doesn't matter if your, your version says 
in the Holy Spirit or with the Holy Spirit, they both be the same thing. Uh, if you're baptized with water, you're immersed in water. If you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, you're immersed in the Holy Spirit. Same thing. And John said it too. In, in John 1, 33, uh, John the Baptist said, I myself do not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit demand, demand, descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. The word is full of it, folks. I could go on and on with passages. But you've got to read for yourself. Don't, don't just keep this saying it and it looks like it's brand new. Uh, this is my third Bible, I think. And uh, it's getting kind of ragged. But that's okay. I always look at a person's Bible. If it looks like it's getting a little ragged, it means your soul is not. Amen. Your soul is fine. To be filled with the Holy Spirit to the overflows, to be immersed in the Holy Spirit. It gives us a boldness and the power of God's Spirit to accomplish Christ's purposes and, get this, with His authority. In and of ourselves, we cannot do anything. There are people out there who will tell you, well, God's already put everything in place. If you get sick, brother, He's got a cure for you out there. All you've got to do is reach out there and find it and pull it back in. <coughs> Horse feathers. You go before the Lord and you can ask the Lord. Do you remember what you remember about Paul? Paul had a thorn in the flesh, and how many times did he pray for it? To be removed? And what God tell him? Yeah. No. Yeah. My grace is sufficient. And that's what I believe. So now to understand, to fully understand. Scripture and prophetic scripture. We need the Holy Spirit. He's going to help that scripture come alive and He's going to bring you to an understanding you did not have before. Guaranteed. I guarantee you. If you read it right and you, you study what He has to say, and sometimes you may have to go to some writings. But be careful of what writings you use. Make sure that you're using the writing that's of a bona fide believing Christian who preaches the Word. Biblical prophecy is not easy to understand in the human in the human realm. <clears throat> if we have the Holy Spirit, we will be led through prophetic scripture with clarity and depth of understanding. Guaranteed. He will not leave you hanging. One of the biggest things that baptism in the Holy Spirit brought me was peace. Amen. A lot of peace. I came back from Vietnam and I hadn't known peace since then. I hated the people of the United States. I didn't like people at all. At that time, I was just to shoot you and listen to you. But that baptism of the Spirit said, no, you got God's peace. You're out of peace. So that's why I, I'm, not, I'm not scared. I'm not afraid. I know I'm okay. Now, the VA tells me I still got PTSD. Don't worry, I ain't going to be up on the roof with a 357 shoot picking people off in the parking lot. But it's for the Holy Spirit. It's through the Holy Spirit that overcomes that. Yeah. Gives you that. He gives you, he grabs them reins and goes, whoa, boy, back up there. He's going to strengthen you to any turmoil or strife happening now, and that's going to come. And in the process, he's going to give you the ability to honor God and do it without fear of man. Don't be afraid to speak up for Jesus. Amen. Never be afraid of that. Amen. God wants to baptize everybody in here, number one, into salvation by belief in Jesus Christ. 
And once, the, once you see how wonderful that is, to make that decision to follow Jesus by baptism of the Spirit, that's when you become a follower of Jesus Christ. A lot of people know about Christ. The devil knows about Christ. And he can drop this full scripture better than I ever could. That don't mean he's following Christ. He's getting left in the dust if he's trying. But you have to, baptism in the Holy Spirit is not something that's going to come automatic. It's something you've got to want. It's got to be your decision. And, and I, would, I would suggest that you pray about it. Just pray about it and see what God tells you. I challenge you this week to come read about it, meditate on it, pray on it, see if you're ready. My big prayer is that if you've not been baptized in the Spirit, you're going to be led to seek Him out. And I think if our people, if a, the large majority of our people are baptized in the Spirit, you will be able to hold this church on the ground. You may have to climb a ladder to get in the door in the morning. I, I want to see this church filled with the Holy Spirit. Not that I don't think it is now. But I want to see it, and I want to see the Holy Spirit acting. I want to see the, the gifts of the Spirit coming through out here. I want to be, I want to be shown as be manifested on the people out here. And I'm not talking about me here staying. I'm talking about you guys. That's my fervent prayer. And it, any, any brother who sit with me for a while and listen to me spout off in there will know that's what I happen. That's what I believe. It's like walking on a cloud of. It's like walking on a cloud. Yeah. There's, there's, there's power. In it. There's absolute power in being filled with the Spirit. Huh. That's fantastic. That's a good little thing. Did y'all ever see that? Yeah, I had it. Uh -huh. Did you? I like that, man. 911 for the kids. Yeah, 911. That's pretty neat. Maybe if you, maybe if you talk real nice through the day, you might get caught yet. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for how you have made your word there for us, and we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you bring it to life for us. And Lord, we just pray that, in, that right now that we are doing your will, Lord. And we pray that, uh, that we are following your mandates out there in this world, that we're going out there and letting people know about Jesus Christ. We're not afraid to speak your name, Jesus, to any, any person, any place. Father, I watched, a, I watched a street preacher preach to a bunch of Muslims the other day. And no matter what happened, he kept preaching. He kept preaching. And finally, there was no one left but one Muslim. And after a little while, he just shut up and listened. And I like to think that he, he, he was touched by the Holy Spirit at that time. I don't know. You know. But it's happening out there. We see, we see revival around the world. And we see it in small ways, individual ways. When we're out here, we're looking for a massive revival, Lord, and, and let's see a revival here in this church, Lord. A revival among the people in this church. Lord, we are your children. And Lord, we desire your love. We desire your mercy, your grace. And you give those freely, Lord, without, without cost, without asking. And so, Lord, we just want to, to lean on you this morning. And we want to lean on the Holy Spirit to give them wisdom and knowledge as we go through your word. And so, Father, as, as we go into this week, I just pray that each and every one would have a renewed fervor for picking up the word and reading it. As, I pray that each and every one will ask the Holy Spirit where they need to start. And he will have a place for you. He's going to show you something. And, and when, you, when you do get that revelation from him... Take it seriously. Because he's telling you a truth. And so, Lord, I just pray that, uh, that all of our people will, will look to you this week. And Father, for those who are sick right now, Lord, we ask that you would bring them to a healing state, Lord. 
bring them back to good health, and have them back in church next week. And so, Lord, we're, we're all, I always come here, I always come here, so, Lord, that I want to hear something from you. I want to be amazed when I walk out of here. I want to say, I never knew that, but, boy, I do now. So I just pray that we'll all come with that, that attitude, Lord. And that we will live our lives in such a way that presents Jesus Christ to the world out there. And presents Him in a godly manner. Father, we thank You and we praise You for everything You do for us and everything You're going to do for us. And we want to give You all the honor and all the glory and all the things. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 <coughs> I thought